Okay, here we are back in Lightroom, uh, screen recording with OBS, and I feel like there's been a million things going wrong just trying to get this to work, and this is actually like the second or third time trying to clip this video so I can show you kind of the editing process from the images that we just took. So you can see I, I already went through and kind of edited a few just to kind of get a feeling of what we were looking at, but we'll go back over that. Um, I picked a few of my favorites, and I actually want to start with this one right here in landscape, uh, actually portrait orientation. This one was really good. I really like this, uh, the way that this looked. So I'm going to kind of go over this and kind of show you kind of um, my approach to this thing real quick. Uh, let me go into the develop it module real quick. And, you know, right away, um, a lot of this is kind of quick and easy for me because I have presets. Now, in order for you to kind of get the look exactly the way that I do it, or within that kind of color spectrum, I would tell you to go over to my website and check out the presets, shameless plug, but I do create presets, I do sell presets, so you're on my channel, I'm definitely gonna tell you about them, you can find them down below. Uh, for today, um, I was experimenting with a new set that I am coming out with, but it isn't out yet, so I don't wanna Kind of give you a teaser with something that you really can't access so i'm going to use the uh sin collection now the sin collection is out right now and that will kind of give us the look that we're looking for today so um i'm going to drop down to my sin collection you can see there's so many of them here and as you go through them they kind of change and you know you can see kind of where we're looking at uh things now i had kind of went here with it um the sin collection is kind of green but you know, we can go there or we can kind of maybe warm something up and do like uh, golden or whatnot. Let, let's do golden. Let's do something a little different than what I did before because I kind of like this. Um, so I'm going to pick this uh, golden um, JD Sin Collection golden. Um, let me just make sure that's exactly the one that I want. Um, I believe I will be using this one and... Yeah, I mean, these are really dedicated for street photography, but they work for this kind of stuff as well. Um, oh, I kind of like that, too. Um, neutral. No, let's go golden. All right. I'm getting lost in things. Looking at the presets, they kind of give you an overall color grade of what I'm going to do. But you'll notice right away... When I told you about how I always start with three quarters or at least one stop uh, underexposed, that is to preserve these highlights right here. Now you can see, um, well, if I go to the original um, reset, if I go to the original, you can see that they're not that bad. Um, they're pretty much right where I want them to be. They're not overexposed. They're not blown out. If you were to shoot this evenly, it would probably be blown out. I always underexpose when I'm shooting product photography, for the most part. Sometimes food, when I'm trying to get a light and airy type of look for food or like salads or things like that, when I shoot food photography, not so much underexposure. But for these tactical images, I'm creating a look of cinematic and um, surrealistic so I want to underexpose and just save my highlights so right here I'm going to pick that neutral no I was going uh, golden so I'm going to pick this golden here and we're going to start with this image right away um, I like pretty much everything the way it is I always told you that I like to keep some things a mystery and right here on the bottom you can see that the knife is pretty much completely in the scene not that big of a deal, but if I wanted to go in and just kind of take a little bit of that knife out, just to be nitpicky, and then even it back out here. When I crop, I always leave these um, this setting up here so I can see exactly my framing, and this is going to give me a 5 by 7 which is fine. 5 by 7 is fine. Just center that out, enter, and that's what I'm left with. Real quick, I'm going to fix this... Uh, problem right here. This isn't dust. This is um, just a mark in the slide. All right, so it's still, right now it's even exposure. Um, this is just even exposure. That's a little too bright for me, but there's some things that we can do to take it down, but take it down the right way. And 
real quick, I'm going to take the exposure down just a little bit, but I'm, I'm not looking at the shadows here. I'm only looking at the highlights. So this is fine. I mean, it, it's fine where it is, but I'm just going to bring it down just ever so slightly. I'm going to take the contrast out. I'm going to take my contrast out negative 90 on that. If you contrast it up too much, it, it also gets dark, but it gets too crunchy. And that's not the look we're going for. We're going for this kind of cinematic look highlights. This is where, you know, you can, you can go into dangerous territory here and you can jack these up a little bit too much. These are all the way down. I kind of like when they're all, all, all the way down. So I'm going to do like negative 84 on this again, shadows. I'm going to pull the shadows darker a little bit here. They were, they were all the way up at like almost a hundred. That's gonna, no, that's not for this whites. This is where you can get a little bit of the highlights back a little bit without blowing them out. I'm going to raise those highlights up just a little bit, like 33. And the blacks, um, I'm going to leave the blacks where they are because I'm going to do something with them later. Clarity, it's the same thing here with clarity. If you go too strong on a clarity, everything gets really crunchy. If you go too soft, it kind of all fades away. I kind of go a little bit in a negative, like negative 13 here is like good, um, 20. That's fine. Texture is fine. You can add some texture back into it. I usually do that. Plus 14. Uh, Dehaze, same thing. Dehaze will lighten it up if you go to the negative. If you go to the positive, it can get it crunchy again. Um, sometimes I use dehaze, but not so much. Um, if anything, I'm going to take it down a little bit. Same with uh, saturation and vibrance. Now, vibrance, sometimes vibrance, I tend to pump vibrance up a little bit to pull up those colors, to punch them a little bit, but not oversaturate them. Saturation, you can see, is negative 12. If I was to crank that up, it starts looking really sloppy. If I take it all the way down, it looks a little washed out. Depends on the look you're going for. You can definitely add that look, and, and that's fine. But I'm going to take a little bit of that saturation out and I'm going to be at like negative 15 on this. I'm going to bring my vibrance up a little bit, like 30. And that's perfect. That's like right where I want it. I'm not going to mess with the tone curve just yet. When I go into sharpening, you'll see here, um, I have my sharpening all the way up. Now, what does that look like? I always keep it all the way up, but what I do is I mess with the masking here. So I'll hit option and I'll keep my finger, uh, my, my pointer on the masking slider. And you can see real quick, this is everything that's being sharpened. Okay. I don't need that. So I'll slide it all the way up to where I want it. And right about here is what I want. So everything you see in white is now being sharpened. That's where the sharpening is being added to anything that's black is not. So that's pretty good for me. Release the buttons. And that's what I'm left with right there. Perfect, fine. That's all that I'm looking for, and I like that. Uh, remove chromatic aberration, sure, but this isn't really a high dynamic range situation where chromatic aberration is really going to cause any issue. So um, now we go into vignette. Now there's a couple ways to do this. This had a little bit in it. You can do post crop vignetting, vignetting, but that kind of puts a circle right in the middle. And I'm not really all about that. I like to be like really, uh, you know, selective with my vignetting. So what I'll do is I'll go up to the masking tool and I will click and I will pick radial gradient. And let me open that up a little bit more and I'll just put a circle right here in the middle. And I'll slide this down to where the firearm is, the main subject. And that's where I'm going to put it. Now, you'll see that it only affects that, but you're saying, well, that's affecting it in the wrong way. And you're right, it is. So what I do is hit the invert right here, little button up to the top right, hit invert. And that will now invert that gradient and make everything affect outside of that. You can feather it a little differently if you want, if you, you, you know, you want a little bit more of the, you know, the firearm or your subject. Uh, you know, not affected. So that's fine. And then what I do is now bring the exposure down just a little bit. Okay. So if you bring it down too much, you'll see exactly where we're at, but I'll bring it down just a little bit. Once I have that set with the, uh, with the radial gradient, then what I'll do is I'll usually come down and then I'll go back into my regular vignette 
and you know, I'll kind of tune out a little bit and just see if that kind of adds anything that I want. And that, that's good. I like that. I'm not using a lot, but when I do add the, the vignette, I often, um, bring the midpoint all the way to the left. And then I bring, I leave roundness where it is. I feather all the way up and I do my highlights all the way up to a hundred. And then I'll start to add with the amount. Um, that usually gives me the most pleasing effects that I like. Grain right now is a 12. You can leave that or you can take it off. I'll just take it off for now. It's not a big deal. Sometimes if you want to add a little punch to your color, you can go down to the saturation, usually in the blue primary, and you can bring that up. And you can see that that punches up the image a little bit, but I really don't like that for this. I want to keep it kind of um, soft and mute. And right now, we got a really good look right now. And I kind of like this. Now, in my favorites, um, I do have this thing called the fade. And this will bring us back up to this, this tone curve. Um, if I put the fade on, you'll see how this kind of just completely washes the image out, right? Um, that is a look that you can go for. But what I can do is in the amount, I can take it all the way back down again or I can kind of add it just back ever so slightly if I want to. And that kind of gives me a look as well. If I don't like that, I can just take it off completely and get that fade out of there. There's another way you can do a fade. And if you want to do it manually, you'll notice that on your tone curve here, you have a straight line running from bottom left to top right. And now that is your, that's like your parameter. That's like your baseline. And usually a slight S curve is what most people go for. But if you're looking for that, that soft fade look, you need to make sure that you have your anchor points in the lower left hand here and grab that left one and you can bring it up ever so slightly and that will give you a fade. You can see if I go real drastic what I'm talking about. But, and if you go the other way, it darkens everything up, right? So... Here is where it was. I'm gonna bring it up ever so slightly just to give it a little bit of a softness and a little fade. And right there, guys, is kinda where I would go with this. Um, if I do it a white background, you can, that's a little strong for you, but if I do this in black, you can kinda see the image a lot better. And I don't like to edit with the black background because I feel like it kind of throws off my uh, my look a little bit and, and my color perception. So I usually do like a dark gray or a darker gray. Um, in this case, I'm gonna just do a dark gray and I like that right there. And so that would be that photo edited out. Um, again, that was with um, the um, golden, I believe. This is the same photo, slightly different crop maybe, and uh, maybe similar, yeah, kind of similar. But this is with, uh, I believe this was matte that I started with. So again, you can kind of, you know, see where the sin style is kind of going that way. If I want to take this other one and let me see, I want to duplicate the same look, right? You can just right click here, go to development settings and go to copy settings. Now you're gonna see everything that's on here. I wanna copy that mask because even though it may not be in the right spot, I can kind of just readjust it because you saw how I was able to move it around again. I'm gonna save myself time here, guys. Copy, okay, because I use the same lighting and I'm gonna go into this, this photo right here and I'm gonna hit paste, okay? And let's see what that does. Right there, um, I wanna adjust that mask. I'll go into the radial and I'll bring it where I want to bring it. Um, this is kind of strong, so um, I got to find where those anchor points are, and I need to bring this kind of in a little bit more. Um, let me make this smaller, a lot smaller, so I can kind of work with it because it was it was off, but it was also, uh, and I'm going to rotate it, and I'm going to put it right over where I want to put it, and I'm going to feather this out just a little bit more. And let's just see here. I'm going to bring that back up just a little bit. And that's fine. Um, this, I can take this down just a little bit. And that's kind of where it's going to be. But I am going to bring this image up just slightly and fix that spot again. That's not dust. That's actually... Um, it, uh, you know, a problem in the uh, finish of the, the firearm there. Um, I may crop this a little bit. Um, I may crop this in a little bit just to get rid of some of this negative space down here. 
Um, and again, just deal with it that way. Take some of this plant out here, some of this firearm, uh, some of this ammo box right here. Because again, I don't need the whole thing. I, I, I want to create some mystery. And there's the final on that one. Uh, maybe bring the blacks up a little bit on this one. Eh, I don't want to go too much. And I like this. So, you know, right here, it's, you know, there's a little bit of bokeh here. It's an F4. Um, I have the, you know, the live rounds right here. I have a little bit of a holster. I have the spider go knife that's kind of blocking the firearm a little bit, just adding some depth, adding some layers. You have the foreground, you have some stuff in the foreground, you have these supporting characters, you have your main subject that's in focus. You have another, you know, item right here where people might be kind of guessing what that is and that starts a conversation. Uh, and that is, like I said, the multitasker, that's a firearm armor's kind of tool and then you have the scope in the background on the um you know dmr rifle back here so again people may talk about what kind of scope is that that is a vortex but you know whatever it just again it just adds to the overall scene um same thing if we go back to that same image we talked about we have our hero right you know center he's a little bit lower but again, the main subject right here with some of the tools and you see a little bit more of that gun, but it's not the whole thing. And there, you know, even the plant over here, it's kind of sticking out a little bit. It's not the whole thing. Now you could go into these things if you really wanted to, and you can create new masks and you can like brush and like, let's just say you wanted to, you know, do an exposure on this um, and bump this up a little bit just to kind of address some of these issues. You know, if you wanted to kind of make that a little brighter, you can you can do that. If you wanted to kind of, you know, pop little spots right here where the highlights are, you can, I mean, you can really do whatever you want to do to highlight certain things within, within the image and kind of, you know, boast it a little bit just to kind of get where you want to go. I mean, does it make a huge difference? It, it all depends. I mean, there it is off, there it is on. I kind of like that. I kind of like that it brings up some of that plant um it, it subjective when you edit again i never say that there's a set rule a lot of people will try to say like this is the right or wrong way to do things i don't pay attention to that i kind of go by the eye of things i look at things and i say i like that or i don't like it here was the third image that i picked and again that was set with the other um preset but again if i want to um you know, add this filter, I can do that as well. Let me go back into here and let's pick, uh, let's pick this one. It's the same thing, but it may be just adjusted a little differently. Copy those settings, um, copy settings, copy, and we'll go into the other one here and we'll paste it. And what does it look like? Let's see, it's rendering out. There you go. Actually, well, that looks really good. I like that. Um, let me see where that radial is and um it might be exactly where i need it to be yes i will fix the little blemish there um there's it looks like a little piece of dust there i'll fix that boom and maybe i will just crop this a little bit here to take some of that box out because again it's not needed um i like to add that mystery i don't always need it to be so um everything in frame so again what do we have we have a little bit of the holster here, the Kydex holster. We have the, the Magtech uh, ammunition right here with the box, a couple spilt rounds, the the Spyderco um, Paramilitary 3, I think, there's a no, Para 2 um, custom. And again, it's it's half hidden, it's half off the thing. We have some paracord rope. We started out, right? The layer we started out, like I said, with the stone on the bottom and then we added some 550 cord we added the bag as a prop as a backdrop um just to kind of take up a lot of negative space and again it's different materials it's it's metal it's stone it's ammunition it's rope it's cord it's you know different kind of cotton weaves and and you know and this uh, canvas bag and then we add a, a plant whether it's fake or real off to the side and just overall another item that you can tag on your social media that will get to see it and hopefully they can reuse it if they want to and maybe get paid for it and then you know just to fill up the background here you know just part of the gun scope just to add to the scene and give you this overall scene now again there's something to be said about just shooting a product by itself and you can certainly make it look good i've done it i'm sure you've seen some of my images 
but this overall um, just completely immersive scene here with different tactical elements just adds to an overall look and just a really cool picture. So that's how I do things. I'm sorry if the video was a little choppy. This is my first one of just kind of running you through start to finish, and that's really what I wanted to do. Um, hopefully the point came across. I'm going to do more of these. I think I may start a series, and you guys let me know if you like that. Comment, question below, um, whatever it is. Please like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, I may start a series where I do like one image, um, you know, just go through one image, just edit one image live like this on uh, using screen capture on my Lightroom and kind of just show you my techniques about the way I do things. Shameless plug, yes, the presets are down below. This is the Sin Collection. This will give you those uh, color palettes. And again, you can change everything up if you want. You can simply go into, you know, your color wheels here if you want to and, you know, kind of run through each one if you want to and, you know, adjust from there if needed. But this is where we're at, start to finish. Those are the uh, finished uh, photos. A couple different looks, like I said, a more of a warm, more of a, uh, a darker green blue. Same thing over here, different crop. And you gotta play around with this thing and you just kind of see what works for you and, and go by the eye. But that's my process. Hope you enjoyed it. Sorry if the video's long and choppy. Um, I apologize. If you didn't see the first part of this video, go to part one, part two, and this will be part three. And uh, I will get better at this, I promise. And I um, hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one.